This is Mike Bot. Today I'm going to be doing a small video on the Anchor Make Slicer Lithophane settings. So as uh, some of you may or may not have seen, I made a YouTube short not that long ago showing a Lithophane that I made. And it came out extremely successful. I've made a few since. And I think I have the settings tweaked uh, pretty good right now using the current uh, Anchor Make Slicer version. So uh, just show everybody which version I have here. So I'm at 0.9.2. And I assume that's test three or revision three of it. So it's not even version one. We're still in beta here. All right. So first thing you want to do with your lithophane print is you need to find a photo that you want to turn into a lithophane. So you find a photo and then you got to go to a site called lithophanemaker.com. This site I've been using for a while. I am not sponsored by them. I am not affiliated in any way, shape or form. It's just a really, really great site. As a matter of fact, I recommend uh, you join their YouTube group or subscribe to their YouTube channel as well just to support them and donate if you're able to do so. Uh, but anyway, the Lithophane Maker website is pretty incredible. So here it is. You can make lamps. They're working on the heart one still. This one's not perfect. I tried one already. It's okay. Then you have the light box maker, the night light, the globe maker. I've made a globe, which was really nice, actually as well as the flat lithophane maker. It's also, oh, this is, I haven't noticed these. So we got a ceiling fan one here, curved lithophanes, color lithophane maker. That's pretty neat. And then circular, this would probably be good for coasters or something. Oh, and then there's a Christmas tree one, but as you can clearly see in the photo, it looks okay. So the one that I made and that was on my uh, YouTube channel was the flat one. So I believe I went with the uh, hook tab version. It's not showing the little tab here, but there was a tab on wine, as you probably saw in my uh, in my uh, YouTube short. So next, what you want to do is you want to find the photo you're looking for. I don't have a photo uh, in mind right now, so I'll just run through it briefly. So you click browse, you find your photo, the photo shows up here, and then you just want to set your uh, width, your height, the depth you want this. So I think I went with the defaults for the most part. I just made sure the photo fit, so I cropped it. Um, then basically you can go through the defaults if you like uh, or whatever you like. So it, 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 it's up to you to mess around with this. I'm not doing a video on the Lithophane Maker. I'm just showing you how to get started. So make your Lithophane Maker, whether you use this site or another site or use Creality or whatever. Uh, to proceed with this one, you need to put your email in. Uh, then click create and it'll download. Then once it's downloaded, you open up the zip file and you throw the STL into here. So once you've thrown the STL into here, this is where the settings comes in. So I'm just going to go ahead and open my STL file from the site. And this is the same one I used on the YouTube short. As you can see, it has the tab here. It's basically just me wearing the uh, Mario Galaxy, not Galaxy. I can't think of it right now. I'm going to get attacked in the comments for this uh the mario hat from the nintendo switch mario game which i can't remember the name of right now so anyway there it is that's what it'll look like so first thing we want to do uh you want to click pla plus expert mode settings and then you want to start creating your profile once you create your profile you click save as so I've already saved mine. So I'm just gonna show you my profile that you're I'm assuming you're going to be copying and using. So first thing you want to do layer height 0 0.12 millimeters. This is very, very important walls. You want to keep them at 0 0.8 top bottom 0 0.8. You don't want to mess around with too many other settings in here. It's a lithophane. You want it to be as transparent and as nice as possible. Uh, sorry, my mouse is clicking away really quick here. You do want to fill gaps between walls everywhere. And for the top bottom, um, for the top bottom, just leave them as defaults. So the infill, this is probably the most important part here. You want 99% infill density, not 100, 99. That's the magic number that's worked for me for a long time. You want it to be lines and you can connect or not connect. I connect them just to make it a little stronger. And that's basically it for that section. Now under material, you want to change the temperature to 215 and 60. That's the best setting for PLA that I've found over the last couple of years or longer. 
speed. 200 was the magic number I found with the anchor make. And then I enabled jerk and control and acceleration. I don't recommend, you don't want it to go too fast. Even jerk is iffy if I really want that on because it's going to take away from the detail really. So I'd say leave acceleration and jerk controls off. Now, as far as travel goes, retraction is okay, but you want to pay attention to the combing. Where is the combing? Give me a second here. There it is. So combing for this one, you can set it to all. Now with Petchy, you don't want it to be all, and I'm going to do a quick little video right after this one on Petchy as well, just to update the settings to the latest and greatest. Cooling, you want that to be on 100%. Supports, depends on what you're printing. If you're doing a curb, you might want supports, maybe not. You should be able to print most litho veins without supports. Build plate adhesion, I like to go raft. I play it safe, I go with a raft. You can do a brim, I don't recommend a skirt because it might get knocked over, especially if you're going at 200 MMS. And then... And other than that, that's basically all you need for lithophane. So I'm going to list the settings uh, right at the end here. And then uh, I'm going to proceed with Petchy next. If you have any questions or comments about the lithophanes, leave them in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Now for Petchy. So since Anchor updated their slicer, I lost all my settings. So I'm just going to go ahead and create one from scratch right now then. Um because I was asked in a previous comment if I could redo the Petchy setting. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that right now. Now for Petchy, I'm not going to be doing a little fain, so I'm just going to delete that. I will open, uh, let's go with the six to four reducer that I printed the other day. Had a hell of a time printing this with PLA. Um, I don't know what its problem was, but anyway, so, okay. So I'm going to go through the Petchy settings now. So as far as Anchor Make FDM settings, I don't mess with those too much yet. I'll make a video in the future when I'm ready to uh, mess around with those settings, but not yet. The software is still beta. I don't trust it. Layer height, I go 0 0.31. It's a functional print because I don't really care about quality or details. For walls, I go 2.4 in this case. You don't have to copy these settings. You can go 1.2, 0 0.8 if you really want to. But uh, if I'm using PETG, I'm usually printing something important and I want it to last. So I go 2.4 and I alternate extra walls and I also ensure gaps are filled in everywhere between the walls. If you want to hide your Z alignment, I would probably go sharpest corner or smart hiding. Now for top bottom, again, I go 1.2. This is completely up to you which one you want to go with. And then you can go concentric or lines. This doesn't affect the print in any way. These are just settings I like to use. I don't do ironing for prints like this. Don't care about it looking pretty. I'll just close these here just to keep the screen clean. Infill. 20% is usually pretty good, especially for a print like this. If you have a print that needs more structure, more quality, and the walls isn't enough, usually walls is strength. Infill... It helps a little bit, but the walls is where you really want it. So for me, 20 is good. And I go triangles if I want it to be really nice and solid. Connect and fill lines. And then infill overlap. Where is it? There it is. So infill overlap percentage, I go 50 just to give it more structure. So temperature for my specific PLA I use, I go with 240 and build plate 80. I'm using the Overture Pet G. Speed, 
Unfortunately, I can't get nice prints any faster than 100. So this is the reason why I still use my Ender 5 Pro specifically for PETG and TPU. Anchor Make is not up to par yet with the PETG and TPU game. I don't know if it's their printer or the slicer, but if I have to drop my speed down for TPU on PETG, Anchor is not ready for those speeds with those types of materials. So I still use my Ender 5 Pro. Now, when I have multiple PETG projects, then yeah, I will refer back to the Anchor Make if uh, I want to make two prints. Like this here would take about 16, 17 hours on my Ender 5. So at 100 MMS, might take five or six, maybe. We'll see. So acceleration control, sure. And jerk, sure. That's just going to make your print a little bit faster. It's going to look a little uglier. But once again, this is not a pretty print to begin with. So in my last video, when I did the Petchy settings, I did not turn on acceleration. So I'm not sure how that's going to work, to be honest. So maybe leave that off if you want your print to work the way mine looked in the previous video I made with the Petchy. Now, as far as retraction settings, so with Cura, I have a Bowden set up on my Ender 5. So I do about a six millimeter retraction settings. And I usually do for my retraction speed 25. If you start to notice a lot of stringing and issues, that's where you want to play around with these a little bit. Increase the retraction, reduce the speed, that kind of thing. There's also a couple other neat features on Cura that I haven't seen here yet, which are very important for Petchy from what I've seen, and that's coasting. So you want to turn coasting on and coasting volume to 0.064, if I remember correctly. And there's a bridge setting that you can enable and infill travel optimization, which you can enable as well. I don't think Anchor Make has those options yet, but it does have combing mode. So for combing mode, you want this one to be within infill. It's optional. You can choose that. Petchy, cooling off always. Always turn cooling off. No cooling with Petchy. Supports, depends on your print. You can choose to enable them or not. I don't need them for this one. And then uh, for this type of print, I did need a raft. Skirt did not cut it. So depending on your print, you can choose uh, whichever you like. Raft, brim, or skirt. It makes no difference really with the uh, Petchy settings. One I do supports, I usually do touching build plate always. And then typically tree. So touching build plate, tree. And then I want the density to be as minimal as possible, but sometimes it doesn't touch the spots you want it to. So you might need to increase it. So this is a bad example, but I will do another video in the future on supports if anyone asks. So that's basically it. So I've gone through the litho settings. So I'm going to go ahead and save this actually. So make sure you click save as and we call it Petchy test things. Or January 2023. And I call them test settings because the software is still in beta. So. so there's the Petchy settings. There's my litho test settings for PLA. Uh, if they worked for you, let me know. If they didn't work for you, leave a comment as well. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you didn't like it, again, let me know why and I will improve on the next video. So basically, that's it for today's video. Just wanted to do a quick little uh, Anchor Make Slicer settings for the litho veins and the Petchy. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Thank you all for watching today. Mike Bot out.